Okay, so let's make the ruffled part of this skirt. I've temporarily added a female base mesh so that there's something to collide with for the ruffles. And I've added a collision. You can click on collision and, and any object with collision will interact with the cloth sim. I don't need that to be visible, so... And I can just easily select this and extrude it. Right click to undo the transformation and then scale that up. Maybe let's scale it a bit more evenly. Okay. And um, add an edge loop here. And press 3 to have face selection and then alt click to select the entire loop. I mean this loop. Press X and delete only faces. As you can see, the edges are still there. These are kind of like stitch threads, I guess. And uh, let's add a little bit more resolution to the rest of this now. So when we use the cloth sim, we can stitch these lines and it will, this edge will snap to here. But because it's too big, it will get ruffled. Let me just show you. By the way, that's not good. I have a pin group, but I'll remove it and restart. So I create a pin group and I will select all of the parts that I don't want to have simulated for now. Because otherwise this will just fall down. So I assign that and just in case I invert the selection and remove. Now normally if I check it in weight paint mode, yeah. So everything that's red will be pinned, will be in that group. Everything that's blue will not be. It's a bit strange that this isn't there. So everything that's red is a weight of one. Everything that's blue has a weight of zero. And now I'm going to use that is I'll add a cloth sim. Ah, I was on frame 220. Let me go back all the way. So here there is a pin group. So you can add the vertex group to that. And now when we run the simulation, only this part which is not pinned will move. And we have to enable sewing or sewing, excuse me. And let's have self collisions because that always looks better. And let's try to simulate that. Okay. So this is the result with the default settings, but actually Blender has all these interesting settings here. For example, denim. Let's check that out. Always go back to the beginning of the timeline when you're doing a simulation. And press play. Okay, let's stop that. I think that's pretty nice, except there's some weird stuff going on here. I want to try one more preset, and that is a leather. Or let's try rubber, in fact. Rubber is a bit heavier. Maybe because it's heavy, it will pull this stuff down. Start from the beginning and play. Alright, so that looks nice. I think I'll prefer this preset. Uh, you can choose a frame that you think it looks the best. Now it looks kind of interesting here. Or here. Of course, in the beginning, it's all flaring out a bit. Maybe that's what you want, something like this. Ooh, I like this, yeah. We can just apply this, otherwise we might lose the result. So now you see that's just applied to the geometry, that's just the way it is now. But there's this little gap here. You can see there's a gap and it still has those edges. But if we hold shift and alt, 
left click on both of these edge loops. Then we can right click and choose bridge edge loops. So now those are all filled. And to make it a little bit less abrupt, I guess we can alt left click on this and then control and plus to increase the selection a bit. And then with the vertex selection, we can choose smooth vertices and then shift R to repeat it a few times. Maybe these as well. That looks a little bit better now. Of course, you can add a solidify modifier. Make it a bit, give it some little subtle thickness, maybe even a subdivision modifier. Nice. Let's add two layers of ruffles to this, like this. Um, first of all, let's do the one at the bottom. We can just select this edge loop like before, extrude it, scale it up, and maybe we can turn it into a circle. And do the same. Well, first, let's uh, let's finish this one. Select these faces, delete only faces, and then we can add some more loops. And then maybe here. Yep. We do the same thing, extrude. Make it more circular. And delete these these guys only faces and uh, we need to flip the normals here so shift n and flip them again and now we can add some more loops okay now i want to hide this temporarily and this too So that I can select all of this and add it to a vertex group. Okay, that looks good. So everything that's blue will be affected by the um, simulation. Everything in red not, because we'll add it to the pin group of the cloud simulation. In fact, let me do that right now, here in the pin group. We enable sewing and self collisions. And as the presets, let's uh, try out silk this time. Play it from the beginning of the timeline. Let's try another preset. It looks interesting, but I think the the sewing force needs to be a bit higher with rubber because rubber is very heavy. So let's try that again. Okay, that looks much better. Let's see if we can find the most interesting frame. I like this. So I will apply it. And now we have the mesh. I do recommend separating this again as a separate mesh. Pressing P, separate by selection. And then you can add a solidify modifier and a subdiff modifier. Looks nice. Uh, let me see, because there are a lot of ugly Additional vertices here. Let me just delete all these. No, I 
mushroom deleted vertices. Now I have a big chunk missing. Let me undo that. How should we do this? Delete vertices. Bridge this. And then just add an edge loop and maybe we can uh, relax these a bit. So that looks a bit better now. Of course in sculpt mode you can use the grab brush and maybe pull this stuff out a bit more if that bothers you. And you can always make it fit a bit better. And for this we have this gap that we can fix in the same way as before. We just select both and then bridge edge loops and we can uh, increase the selection and smooth it out some. That looks better. And then this one can also have the same modifiers. So these are the results.